In this video, I'm going to show you how I make one of my favorite projects. It's an epoxy river charcuterie board with live edge wood. So the first step is to uh, cut out the forms. Here I'm cutting down some melamine. I just finished cutting out the base and now I'm cutting out the edges. The edges are about two and a half inches wide each. The form itself is 14 inches by 8 inches. Now that the edges are cut to width, uh, I have to cut them to length. The two front and back edges are a little bit shorter than the sides, so I just cut them there on my cross cut sled. Now that all the form pieces are cut to, to size, I need to wrap them in tuck tape. This is really important. Otherwise, the epoxy will stick to the melamine. So there are a couple critical things when you're applying tape to your melamine. Uh, one, you need to use a tuck tape. Um, and two, you need to make it overlap uh, probably about, I'd say, a half inch on each strip. This is so you don't get any leaks. And I fold over the edges and cut off any excess. This is also so I don't get leaks on the sides. Once I'm done the bottom, I'm going to wrap this, the edges of the form in, in tape. It takes a while and you want to make sure that you do it really well because if you get any leaks, the epoxy is going to go all over the place and uh, you'll, you'll waste a lot and it, it may even ruin your project. So take your time, be careful and uh, Make sure that you do a really good job. With all the edges wrapped in tape, uh, it's time to drill some holes in them. So I drill holes, I, I drill pilot holes here so that the screws uh, won't split the melamine. I drill them about every three inches with holes on each uh, edge too. Once the holes are drilled, I take my countersink bit and I indent uh, each of them so that the screw head will fit in there without splitting the melamine. It takes a little more time, but you just get a cleaner result and you can use the forms longer uh, without breaking them when you do this. Now that the edges are all uh, pre-drilled, I can put the form together. So it's just a matter of putting the screws in. Uh, lining up the pieces and putting the screws in. I like to put screws in the top corners of the uh, front and back edges. Uh, this is just so that there's no gaps. And I use 100% silicone here uh, along any of the uh, joints. This is to prevent any leaks. The epoxy is going to stay uh, runny for about 36 hours. And so it's really important to seal it up against any leaks. Otherwise, you'll end up with a mess and a wasted epoxy. So now that the form is done, I'm going to cut down the wood. I marked it uh, in half, and I'm going to cut a straight line with my bandsaw right down the middle. And this is the edge that's going to become the outside edge of the uh, charcuterie boards. The live edge is going to be on the inside, and that's going to make the river. Now that the pieces are cut uh, in half, I'm going to mark the ends of them so I can cut them to width. Then I'm going to take them back to the bandsaw and use my miter gauge to cut the ends off. It's a little bit tricky because your pencil marks are on, the, on one side um, and this cut is easy, but when you flip it over, now you have a live edge to work with. Um, and it's not as easy to see where your uh, pencil mark is. So these don't have to be exactly perfect, so it's not a big deal. I took the pieces over to the jointer so I can flatten one face. Uh, this is partly so that they'll sit flat inside of the form, but also because I want to uh, resaw them in half so I can make multiple charcuterie boards with them. And when they have a nice flat face, they'll ride really well on the fence and on the bandsaw. A few passes in the jointer and they're ready to go. Now I can run them through the bandsaw. I put the blade approximately in the center of the piece 
It doesn't have to be right on, but the closer the better. You really want to end up with uh, your boards about the same same uh, depth of epoxy pour. This makes uh, the process easier later when you're uh, milling them in the planer. Now I'm going to remove the bark. So I put them in my wood vise and I use a spoke shave to pull the bark off, strip it off. It's a lot of fun. It makes a big mess, but uh, it's a good time. It is a little bit tricky um, with the angles on the live edge, making sure I don't scrape my uh, vise, uh, and also having the wood so it's not flopping around all over the place. But once you get a rhythm going, it, it comes off really smooth. Then I put a bit of silicone on the bottom of the pieces. Uh, so the silicone is so that the epoxy doesn't leak underneath. It also helps hold it down to the form so they don't float on the epoxy. I take some clamps and some wooden blocks uh, wrapped in tape. This is so that uh, the clamps uh, won't uh, get inside the epoxy if the epoxy pour is a little bit deep. I wouldn't want my clamps sticking to the epoxy. Now it's time to measure how much epoxy is required. So I take five measurements of the width and I take the average of those. Then I measure the length and the depth of the pour. There's a formula that I'll post in the uh, description to, to show how to calculate this, this value. Once I figure out how much epoxy I need, I mix the uh, hardener and the resin, and then I add a little bit of the dye. Here I'm using Ecopoxy. I really like this stuff. It's expensive and takes a long time to cure, but I never have problems with bubbles. The pour is really fun too. Uh, it looks so nice when that epoxy goes in there and it just has such a beautiful color. After four days of curing, it's ready to remove from the forms. So I take the screws out. Then I pop off the edges and I peel off as much of the silicone as I can. It's not always easy to get it all but it helps uh, for removal if you get as much as you can. Then I use uh, a piece of wood to just pry it off the form. When the pieces are removed from the form, I can run them through the planer, uh, front and back. Here you can see I'm using a piece of scrap wood and I feed it in before and after the pieces. This prevents planer snipe. What planer snipe is, is it's an indent at the very beginning and the very end of your cut. So with the scrap piece of wood, the scrap piece will take that snipe instead of the actual nice work pieces themselves. One more pass and everything's smooth, flat and ready for sanding. When you're doing uh, the planing in the planer, you want to make sure that your passes are really, really light. The epoxy tends to chip out pretty badly otherwise. So now that I have nice flat uh, uh, charcuterie boards here, I can cut the edges on the table saw using my crosscut sled. Make everything nice and square. One cut on each edge to remove any excess epoxy and any uh, rough edges. Take it over to my disc sander and I ease those corners so that they're not sharp and hard to handle. Then I take my router and I round over the top and the bottom. This makes it so that the edges are smooth uh, and the cutting of uh, the charcuterie board will be easy to pick up. Rudder goes pretty quick once you have it all set up. Then there's the sanding. Now the sanding takes quite a while. Um, you have to sand through many grits to get the epoxy smooth and transparent. Once that's done, I, I wipe off all the dust from the sanding and all the other operations and I place the charcuterie boards in a mineral oil bath. This really brings out the color and the epoxy and you can see how transparent it is already. I put the lid on and leave it overnight. Then the next day my son was helping me and we dried off all the excess mineral oil and then we apply a beeswax mineral oil finish. This finish helps to protect the boards when you're using them in the kitchen.
So the beeswax, you apply it, and then you wait for it to dry, and then you wipe off any excess and buff it. Now the boards are ready. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe.